Welcome, everyone. You're listening to Maximum Medicine Radio, The Healing Hour, with me, Dr. Sharon Martin, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This is the hour of healing power. In this live call-in show, The Healing Hour, I'm going to take your calls and help you get started on your way to your maximum potential. So come on, settle in, listen up, and I'll take your questions head on. Together, we'll find practical wisdom and understanding about what ails you. In The Healing Hour, we'll start your day off right insights and practical health knowledge and concepts for how you really live i'll take your issue and help guide you with the blend of scientific medicine and the esoteric including shamanic energy medicine so let's shake off some of that mystery and get started on how to really live together let's get unstuck so come on and join in join up and let me help and let go of what holds you back from being the maximum you the world needs Take down this call-in number, 1-800-930-2819, and let's get started on the healing hour right now. Hi, everybody. This is Doc Martin, and we're here with the healing hour, and thank you for being with us. I'm a little sad today because my good friend and co-host, Dr. Pat, is not able to be here today, and usually... When she's with me, everything is smooth and beautiful. Um, So let's all bring her energy in with us to keep us smooth and beautiful. And she'll be back with us next next month. So anyway, thank you for helping me get through it all by myself without her wisdom. And let's see what we can handle today. Today, I want to talk about AWARE. And some of you have seen previous shows where I have a process in my work, in my maximum medicine work, where there is a stepwise process that I feel that people go through when they face any kind of challenge, any uh, progress you wanna make on an issue, any health challenge. And I've broken it down into what I call the four A's. At the very beginning, whenever you have a problem and you, probably know this from, perhaps it's from AA or another self-help process, when you have to be aware of the problem before you can start working on it or um, taking responsibility for it. And this isn't, this isn't an AA topic. This is the concept that aware is very important for the beginning of tackling any process. And I see this process, um, and we're going to spend our time today talking about this section of aware, but you have to be aware of the issue. And once you're aware of the issue, in my belief with energy medicine and shamanic medicine, you then have to allow some help. And allowing help is for me calling in your allies, calling in beings and energies that are higher than you, higher frequency, higher wisdom, higher knowledge. Because if we can't turn it over to something bigger than our own human mind, we don't get very far. And that's a whole separate segment on that allow. But in the process, aware, moving to allow, And then we take action. And that action in energy medicine or shamanic medicine is generally um, ritual and practices and processes and energy clearing and take it to the fire and things like that. So once you take action and remember you're moving on a spiral and life to me is best described as being in spirals. Somebody says we help ourselves by the peeling of an onion, you go layer by layer. Well, I see it as spiral by spiral by spiral. And those are the steps to enlightenment. And in this case, I'm not talking about uh, the Buddhist stages of enlightenment, but your own evolution to something better for you, clearer for you, um, more evolved. 
So once you take action, then you need to really lock it in to your human world because face it, we're in density here in the human world. We are struggling through the literal world. We're not always enlightened. We're not always aware. We're not always capable. But in this last segment of tackling any problem, in the segment of um, taking, after you take action and locking it in, I call that affirm. So that may be you determine that in order to tackle this problem, you have to change one behavior. And you make that change routinely, whether you do it three weeks, six weeks, six months, you've got to affirm that you have listened to spirit in this process that you have taken. You've listened to what's needed for you and you are going to take the action. So you, this is in a sense, the commitment phase. This is when you say, okay, we've talked about it. I got the insight. I know what to do now. Here's what I'm going to do. I am doing it. So those are the four stages, aware, allow, act, and affirm. Now I've made those stages up. Many other people have beautiful processes for development, but those to me are easy to follow. So today on aware, I want to talk about aware because we are capable of so much more. And that's what I think awareness is. Awareness is we are able to get knowledge from the subtle realms. So how do we improve that access? Because when we are aware of a problem, I think it best to really um, hone in on exactly what that problem is, get really clear what it is you wanna change. I'll give you an example. In the aware phase, you might say, oh, I can't stand my job, I need a new job. And you tell the universe, you tell spirit, you tell your guides, I need a new job. Well, all of a sudden you get a new job, but you don't like it. It's not really what you wanted. It happens to be in another city, so you have to commute. It happens to be at times a shift you don't wanna take. Maybe it's more money. Maybe it's um, something you love, but it's less money. Well, the aware phase is about getting really clear on what you mean. What do you mean when you say, give me this new universe, God, spirit, however you call it, give me this new thing or help me shake off a behavior I don't wanna do anymore. So in AWARE, I want to talk about processes that help us get clarity, help us get insight. I want to talk about processes that hone our intuition, because in those phases of honing our intuition, and that's what we're going to talk about today, we can get really clear. The other thing is, all day long, we have flashes of insight. We'll get a message that says, oh, I should be thinking about this or I should be thinking about that. But we don't often pay attention. We don't often hold it in our thinking. Bring it, we don't bring it to the forefront. It's just data coming into our, our brain receives so much, so much data. But we have to be able to listen more deeply because just little twitches of knowings may not be in our forefront. Maybe our attention is occupied with the literal world. And believe me, the literal world is jam packed with data overload. So in the aware, we're going to be getting into phases and practices where we have to be quiet because it's going to be those little things that we're gonna now start to pay attention to. And scientists who know brain physiology know this much better than I do. We're going to have to access different parts of our brain. So if you're like me, where my priority and my predominant approach 
is the intellectual and academic and linear, um, that I guess left-sided uh, brain, we're gonna need to cross over the pieces of tissue that cross over to the right side of the brain to access the intuitive, to access the more subtle, the, the things that come when we put pieces together laterally and um, in combinations, the alchemy of ideas that comes together that's not quite A, B, C, one goes to two goes to three. So in the aware section are different, for me, I like to see it as different processes that can give us better insight to hone our ability to pay attention to our intuitions. Now, I will be the first one to say that I was not, I never thought of myself as intuitive, not ever. I might get a flash of a knowing about something, but I was really good at book learning. Teacher says, these are the steps you need to take to get a good grade. No problem, I can do it. But over the years that I've been studying energy medicine and shamanism, I have done practices that open up my intuition. And I didn't know at the time that that's what it was going to be doing. But I have some pretty darn good intuition these days. And I think all of us can access that. I think all of us have that capacity of darn good intuition. We just have to wake up or pay attention or be aware of that part of our brain. So when we do these processes, even if you think you're not very good at it, don't fret. The more you do it, the better you're going to be. And then you're going to start to listen when spirit gives you a whisper, because often spirit doesn't talk to you in a loud voice. You'll get a whisper and then you'll go, aha, I heard you. And then you take some action. So in a few minutes, we will be back and we are going to start talking about ways that we can hone and improve our awareness. So we'll be back after a short break. Hi, everybody. I'm Doc Martin. We're back. This is the Healing Hour. And today we are talking about aware and how we can access those subtle realms, the place where a lot of knowledge resides. But usually we don't grab onto it. Usually we don't pay attention to it. Or if we do, we don't know what to make of it. So we haven't refined it. And we talked in the first segment about when you tackle any challenge, health or otherwise, then you will go through what I see as a spiral process where you're aware of your issue, you ask for help, help from the high beings and energies higher than yourself, your higher self, your spirit guides, angels, you name it. Then you take action and then you lock it in by affirming that you've heard what you learned, you've paid attention, you're ready to um, make it work in the world. So we're on aware. And with aware, we're going to really try to access knowledge that is not clearly available in the literal world in our human mind. Things that perhaps our body knows, and truthfully, our soul in concert with spirit knows very well. So how do we get to that place? How do we access that? And how do we then start to bring those ideas into bear when we are trying to be aware of an issue? When guides talk to you, and I don't know if you remember my previous show with In Maximum Medicine, with Sharon Klingler, who's a renowned medium. So she literally talks to the other side behind the veil all day long. In fact, she's trained herself to only access when she chooses because I'm sure her brain would be fried otherwise. We have our spirit guides 
relatives and uh, past life connections that have passed on, um, archangels, beings with higher energy, they are all at the ready. They are around us. They are ready to help us. And, but they don't come in unless invited. So a lot of times they'll be ready to give us some answers, but not without us being quiet enough to say, okay, talk to me. And unless you're in danger and you have some pretty powerful guides, I'll just digress a minute and tell you a story about a friend of mine. When he was young, he went out to the, to the yard into a caged in area and there was a dog there that uh, started coming at him to attack him. And whoom, something lifted him up and threw him up over the fence into the other safe part of the yard. And he believes to this day as an adult man that he had some uh, passed on relatives that stepped in to save him. So that's just to tell you that you have help all around, but how are we going to get to that help? How are we going to listen? So we have to be receptive. And we talk about this all the time and many, many people who want to help you move forward with challenges in your life will tell you, you need to be in a quiet space. The world is swarming with unnecessary chatter. It's swarming with, un I don't know if it's unnecessary, I won't say that, but it's swarming with energies of all kinds of frequencies. So if we're going to truly listen to the messages that are coming in, we're going to have to get quiet. So one of my shows recently, we talked about making sacred space. That's a space where you claim out loud to your guides, to the higher beings, here is the place where I sit, where the portal opens for you to join me. I am ready to listen. So we've talked about that before. Listening is a big deal. So you need a quiet place. How The other thing is, if you're going to ask for clarity on an issue, you yourself have to get a really clear question that you want answered, a question that you want more information about. So you can't just say, when, when am I getting married? Well, you probably, you probably could say that, but it works better to say, show me help about my path in the romantic nature. So the messages might come in about things to steer you as opposed to a definitive answer. So you have to get really clear on the questions you want to ask. Because if you pin it down, as I said, it's about a give me a new job. Well, maybe help, help me walk towards a job that gives me security, but also stimulates my brain with coworkers that make me happy. That leaves it open for spirit to create something you may not have even ever thought it existed. So in this first section, I, I'm not moving yet to the altar to show you techniques. This is a technique uh, for you to get clarity that works truthfully best with two people. But once you've become good at feeling when something is right or not right in your body, you can do this technique yourself. And many of you have seen some naturopathic healers or chiropractors use this technique called muscle testing. So the concept of muscle testing is if you hold an arm up and you are told, hold it up, don't let me push it down. Now remember, there's another person with you. And that person tries to push it down. If you are holding an energy that is true inside your body, you have strength, no matter how hard they push. If you're holding a conflicted energy, something that's not quite right, something that your field is not coherent, they push and your arm goes down instantly. 
naturopathics often uh, use this to, they have bottles of different substances, um, sugar, coffee, alcohol, sweetener, um, different food groups that they'll ha have you hold a glass vial of that solution or representative of that against your body and try to test you. And again, the concept is if you go weak, then that's not good. Or the answer is no. So strength, your energy field is coherent. It is cohesive. The answer is yes. The answer is true. Now you can test that yourself if you have a good body sense already. So sometimes I'll think, you know, this such and such, this meeting is coming up. Um, do I really want to be speaking out? And I can kind of feel in my body, yeah, no. Or hell yeah, I need to speak up. This is a critical, critical issue. So you can get to learn that yourself. This is muscle testing by how you feel inside because you can say, okay, I'm being strong, I'm being strong, but it's an icky feeling and you don't like it or the question you've asked, the answer is no way should you do that. Um, for example, I'm gonna be offered a, um, a job in California. Is this job a good one for me? And if it's you know, really not going to be good, it's not where you should put your attention, your arm will go, will go weak. Why, why does that happen? I can't tell you the science behind it, but what I think is happening is you are taking in information to your field. And if your field becomes distorted or um, blocked in some way in the flow of your energy, then you can't hold this because holding this takes a cohesive thought and intention to hold your arm up. Now, truthfully, when you're speaking true and the, and the feeling and the question is true and right, your arm is really strong and somebody can push on it with both hands, try to get your arm down and it won't go down. But otherwise, yeah, the whole thing collapses. So you can test that for yourself by saying, um, try it for yourself. My name is Sharon. Well, this arm ain't moving. My name is Bonnie. Yeah, nah, nah. So I can feel inside myself most of the time when something, yeah, mm -mm, I don't have a good feeling. I've started to pick up clues in my body besides um, in my mind, holding my arm up by now recognizing if I'm starting to get a stomach ache about something, something's not right. And I need to explore that further. So muscle testing usually done with two people. But once you start to really feel your field and feel your cohesiveness, you can visualize this yourself and you can do this yourself. So how do I use that or how would I use that for both in the section of being aware and to apply it to a health challenge? So I'm the purpose of the aware phase is to get really clear on what the issue is. So one of the ways you get really clear is this particular health challenge, I need to take myself to a specialist and make sure that I get X, Y, and Z treatment. Or let's make it just X. And then you can test it yourself. How does that really feel? No. Now, if you're the kind of person that the last thing you want to do is get a lot of pharmaceutical treatments, this answer is probably no for you. And you should be able to feel that. So you can take us uh, and do kind of 20 questions. You remember that game, 20 questions. Is it bigger than a bread box? Yes. Is it so? Is this thing I'm deciding going to further my career financially? Yes. Is it going to give me daily satisfaction? No. 
Is it going to give me academic satisfaction? Yes. Is it going to bring hardship? Yes. So should, you know, it's not, maybe not as simple, should I do it or should I not? Maybe we're again talking about moving ahead with a job. Maybe you need to know a little more that, so muscle testing can help you do the 20 questions on a topic, on a health topic. You know, I really, I've really been thinking I need to change my diet. Should I change to more vegetables? Yes. Should I do the avocado toast every day for each meal? Nah. So those kind of things, you can pick it apart with muscle testing. Again, better done with two people, but you can learn to feel that, am I cohesive and strong or, yeah. You know, this is deflated. My energy field's not so great. So anyway, that's the one process that takes another person. Um, so I couldn't really demo it to you um, in this socially isolated Zoom world, but I think you can figure it out and do it even within yourself. So we're going to talk a few more processes when we come back. Let's take a short break. Welcome back, everybody. This is Doc Martin, and you're on the healing hour, and we're talking about aware. And we're remembering that we usually love to have Dr. Pat with us, and she's not here, but we're getting through okay, I think. So the whole point of aware is, as I've told you, this is the beginning of the spiral process. I see it as a spiral where you start to tackle any issue about something you want to shift in your life. And aware is a very important step because you have to get really clear on what it is you want to work on. And so aware for me is the place where we have to build our intuition and we have to own our knowledge about something. So for me, aware is when you have to be in quiet space enough to hear the voices of spirit talking to you. I believe that we have help all around. And I believe we have data that comes into our brain that we don't use, that we can easily, well, maybe that's too strong a word, that we can access. And we do this by practices that improve our intuition. So what I told you before is a technique of muscle testing usually takes two people. And the next techniques I want to talk to you about are using tarot cards to help you hone your issues and using the pendulum. And then I want to show you about how I would approach using a stone for a stone reading. Tarot cards, I have two decks that I love. Now there are many beautiful, beautiful decks. And the original, of course, is the Rider Weight deck, which was a mastery in the occult back, I want to say 1880s, but I, I don't remember totally. The two that I like, and I'll show you pictures of them when we move over to my altar, the two that I absolutely love are the Akashic Tarot by twins Sharon Klingler and Sandra Taylor. You remember probably remember Sharon Klingler, who is a world-renowned medium and psychic, who was on my show months ago, um, and her sister, her twin, who is a psychologist and family and personal therapist, and they made this deck of cards. It is glorious. The illustrations are beautiful. You can feel the energy. You can feel the soft energy around them. They are, in my opinion, very, very masterful cards and encoded with Sharon and Sandra's energies. And these are women who touch the angel realms all the time. So they really can bring in the higher frequencies. Now there are other cards of other beautiful healers that can do the same. So please don't think that I'm saying there aren't anything else. This, these are just the ones that I love. 
The other I love because it is rich in its color and its detail is a deck called the Golden Tarot by Cat Black, K-A-T Cat. And she has taken masterpiece artwork, tapestries, paintings from the Middle Ages and Renaissance times and digitally manipulated them in collage. And they are rich and lush. And for those of you who've never used tarot before, um, and I may not get the details right because I don't, I'm not an expert on the total details, but they're usually cards of four suits of some sort. Cups, coins, swords, wands, something to that effect. And it goes from one to 10 and then Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. So four of those suits of 13. Then there are 22, I believe, 22 what are called Major Arcana. And from terms of energy, the major arcana cards are big cheeses. So in any deck, you've got the serious speakers in the major arcana. So for me, we're not totally going to do tarot today for the detail that each card gives you because you can shuffle and draw a card and spirit can bring to you the card with the strongest message for you for the day. I truly believe spirit is working behind the scenes in concert to assist in any way. So I believe when you fan out the cards or you shuffle and cut and draw one, you are getting the information you need to have right now. I believe that. You don't have to believe it, but I think when you work with the cards, you will come to believe it. So I'm gonna show you how to use tarot cards to improve your knowledge of a situation, to hone your question, to get more clarity. Remember, we're trying to access the subtle realms. And remember, we're doing this in quiet space because we don't want all that chatter cluttering up our ability to hear the whispers. We wanna hear those whispers. Then I'm going to show you about a pendulum. And a pendulum is a tried and true technique used by many uh, mystical people. And I find that if you can, again, get your head out of it and just let your body quiet in order to hold the pendulum, you can get beautiful information. Now, this is kind of like playing 20 questions because you'll say, is this, is this right? And you'll ask a very specific question, not, can I have a new job? Well, of course you can have a new job, but it might not be a job you like or a job that pays you what you want or that's in the city that you live in so you don't have to drive two miles, or excuse me, two hours to get there. So a pendulum can help you answer that. And I'll talk about that in a bit. And then I wanna sit, if we have enough time, I wanna show you how to sit with a stone. I love stones, you probably know that by now. I absolutely love stones. And for me, they are my vortex, my portal into the space where I can hear messages. So I'm gonna move over now to my altar and I wanna show you first tarot cards. So the golden tarot that I've talked about by Cat Black is a gorgeous, gorgeous, lush deck. And I'll show you a couple of the pictures of these cards. Now remember these are, oh, now look at this. Isn't this, look at the one I picked. Talk about hitting our highest potential. This is a major arcana card, the star. But you can see how lush these pictures are and how much detail taken from other paintings that she made a digital collage. I love the detail. And when I'm doing readings for my friends or for myself or for clients, and I'm looking for a detailed descriptor message, I might use this and really focus on the card. But today when we're just getting clarity about a topic, we're not gonna specifically uh, focus on a card. We're gonna use the cards as a tool 
to answer bigger questions. So the next deck is the Akashic Tarot. These women are mystical powerhouses. This, these twins, Sharon Klingler, who is a medium out of Ohio, who goes to Lilydale, the spiritualist community in New York every summer, and her sister, Sandra Taylor, both published authors, authors in Hay House. These cards are glorious. I want to show them to you. These cards have rich, rich colors, rich energies. They're just, they're just beautifully done. And they're encoded with these women's beautiful energy. These are women who access uh, the subtle realms all the time. And these women are assisted by higher beings all the time. So when you decide to use tarot cards, you're going to make the rules. So you're going to say what it means. For example, I have a question. Let's say, let's stick with the job idea because that we've used that all through the show. Will this job give me financial security? Well, I've, I've decided that for me, if I lay out seven cards, if an upright card is a yes and a down card is a no, I make the rules. So you make your rules, but you stick to it because you're telling spirit, this is how I want you to show me what I'm looking for. I want you to place the cards in upright for yes and down for no. So I'll shuffle the cards, I'll, or I'll, before I shuffle, I'll hold them. Again, we're in quiet space. And I'll turn up, I'll turn up seven cards. And you decide whether you're going to turn them this way or this way. But don't mix up your process. Keep the same process. So turning over seven different cards are a little sticky. And I have six and I have seven. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about that question. You know, will this job give me financial security? Now I have to confess, sometimes I hate the details and the logistics of my job in traditional medicine, because face it, the system of medicine has so many things that aren't very fun. But I get a lot of financial security from that. So, so I look at this and I've got two, three, four cards that are upright, five that are upright and two that are down. So the answer is yes. Now, supposing I had three down and four up, this I might interpret as, you know, that's not really a strong yes. That's not totally strong. So maybe I need to ask a better question. Maybe I need to shuffle up and say, maybe it'll give me financial security, but maybe, yeah, you know, Financial security, well, what does that mean? Does that mean just enough to pay all my bills or am I able to start saving? So will this job pay me enough that I can get out of debt? Up, 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 down. So six ups and one down. So this is not just enough to pay all the bills. This job is enough that I can actually get out of debt. So that's a stronger hint or description of what's coming with this job. So it's financially secure, but more than that, I'm actually gonna make more money about it with it. So, so you can, 
do many things with tarot cards. You can decide up or down. You can decide seven cards or five. You can decide, well, I'm gonna pull one. This guy I met, he seems good, but is he a good fit for me? You can do a yes or no, but maybe you just wanna say, I want some information about this potential relationship. So I pull a card and this is a card that, and add some is a word that truthfully, I don't remember what it means, but when I look at this card, this person is surrounded, let me see if I can get it closer for you, surrounded by things and spirit beings in the background. So when I listen, if I ask this question, you know, do I am I on the right path with this relationship? Well, it didn't tell me, yes, this relationship is great, but it's telling me, you know, we've all got your back. So go ahead, go ahead, we've got your back. Even if it turns out not to be great, we're here giving you guidance. So that's how I would interpret that card. So I think you get the idea about tarot cards. You can follow whatever deck you love. And again, I love those too, so I follow them. Because if you are pulled into the place of feeling good, that's what you want to do. If those cards make you feel good, then you're in the right zone. All right, let's shift gears for a minute. We're just going to keep rolling. Um, and I'm just going to ask Olivia when she gets a chance to put up a, on the chat how many minutes I have left because I'm not overlooking at the timer. <clears throat> so I want to talk about pendulums. So Olivia, when you get a chance, give me a chat. Tells me how much time I have left. Okay, perfect, thank you. This pendulum I love because a former classmate of mine in the Four Winds training, who was a jeweler, made these beautiful pewter, now I'll see if I can get closer for you to really see it. He made an eagle, a hummingbird, a jaguar, and a serpent, which are our four major archetypes in our work. So that pendulum is beautiful. I love that because of that. And this one is a crystal. So whatever you pick as a pendulum, for me, the key is when you hold it, first of all, you hold it gently between your fingers because you don't want to be moving your arm and manipulating it and going all haywire. So you want to just, you're going to hold it and you're going to turn the question over to spirit and you're going to let spirit move the pendulum. So you're not in there stirring the pot. Again, that's the old get your human mind out of the way. You are going to decide and make the rules. Again, you're giving spirit the guideposts here are the lines, spirit. Stay within these lines, please, for me to understand you. If the pendulum swings clockwise, and for me, this is a clockwise circle. I'm making it happen, by the way. For me, that's a yes. Clockwise to me, in my rules, are yes. A little clockwise, eh, not so strong yes. Oh, man, this is a real yes. This is a definite yes. Counterclockwise, for me, is no. Again, strong no, weaker no. Back and forth, for me, I have made the rule. Eh, maybe, could be either. Holding, just shimmering, not moving, not doing anything. The question isn't so hot, or I don't see any forward action in this topic. Change it up, do something different. So when you hold the pendulum and you're gonna hold it gently, for me, I pose the question and then I exhale because I don't wanna hold any tension in my body 
And as I'm holding the pendulum, I really want to close my eyes because I do not want to have any of my human mind influencing the outcome. So I just exhale and I just ask the question. And right now I have my eyes closed and I'm thinking of the question, is my name Sharon? Now you notice it's going count, it's, sorry, it's going clockwise. And as I'm holding it, get my, I open my eyes briefly to see it spinning. Circle is getting bigger. So that's a yes. Well, my name is Sharon. You may write down a series of questions. This might be a good way to go for you to get clarity. Again, bigger than a red box, no. Smaller than a deck of cards, no. So you, you write down the questions. Is this a good job for me? Nah, maybe. Is this an intellectually stimulating job? Yes. Is this job going to help me financially? No. So you're going to ask questions. <clears throat> Is this relationship helping me evolve? No. Will it? Is this relationship interesting? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So pendulum. <coughs> Different pendulums, you decide. Different tarot cards, you decide. Ask your questions. Be quiet. Hold it. Let your arm just rest. Exhale. And don't open your eyes until a few seconds when you feel the pendulum move because I don't want you to think it and think it and force your arm to move. And Olivia, do you mind giving me another, uh, how many minutes left, please? <clears throat> All right, we're right on track, we're doing great. Here are, we're gonna switch to stones. Here are some of my favorite things. And I've just brought three stones here today. This is, I believe this bear, it's carved by a Zuni uh, Native American. Uh, and I believe this stone is Gaspiite. I just love this bear. And bear is one of my totem animals that I lean on a lot. Um, I find his strength and uh, love of the forest. There are many things about Bear. I can lean into him. Um, but anyway, that's a separate subject. Maybe we'll do a we'll do a whole thing on totem animals. That would be cool. But I like to rub him. And when I'm deepening, holding a stone and rubbing it, to me, like a, a rabbit's foot, if you have that, like a piece of crystal. Here's a piece of crystal if you like to have that. You decide what you want. I like to use stones. This final process is to use this stone as a vehicle for you to get into, it's sort of a semi-trance. And it's in that really chopped down, quiet, meditative place where you can ask the questions in your head or you can hear the whispers or see a flash. Sometimes I get a flash of a word across the back of my eyes that then I go, oh, I never thought of that. This is a piece of amber. This is a piece of amber from uh, Chiapas, Mexico. I love amber. It's got a divot right here that fits my thumb, so that makes me very happy. This is my dragon stone. This is what I call on for clearing the path ahead. Um, I got this in Sedona. I love this stone. And this is a, um, an opal from, I believe, Madagascar. And it's probably not the opal like jewelry opal that we know of. But get yourself something that you're going to be able to deepen with and just quiet your mind. Now remember, if I didn't say it already, in your quiet space, you're in sacred space. 
And if you need to do what we talked about before in sacred space, declare it to be sacred, declare it to be a place where you're going to connect to spirit. So when you that, and I just sit and I exhale and I deepen and I ask if I write the questions down, but usually they're bugging me so much, they're right there in my brain. And just rhythmically get yourself into the zone. Rhythmically get yourself into a trance phase and then get your information. And of course, as always, as we've talked about many, many times, you just say thank you afterwards. Thank you to all of these beautiful resources that connect us uh, to spirit. So I'm just gonna come back so I can see your face. Well, you can see my face. And Olivia, we'll come back to this computer, this version. Oh, you know, I just sat with these beautiful things and I'm already dropped into the zone. So I know that you can find your method of intuition, your method that's going to allow you to be more aware of what it is you really want to tackle. Ask the questions with all of these different resources I've taught you. Choose the one you like. Feel the one you love. And use it. And use it in your sacred space. In, and eventually that portal, that vortex that you're going to create that connects you to spirit and your guides and the higher beings, that vortex will get stronger. It'll open more quickly. It'll expand. And you will be there in the zone, the sweet spot in the zone of power. And then you can tackle any issue. Again, this is all about aware. The first step on my, how I see it as a spiral, the first step in tackling any issue you want. So I hope you've loved this show today. We made it through without our pal, Dr. Pat. I think we did okay. I'm sure though, she'll be back next month and we'll be happy to have her with us. So I'm Doc Martin, this is the Healing Hour, and this was all about AWARE, your first step on your four-step spiral for tackling a problem. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for listening to Maximum Medicine Radio, the Healing Hour, with me, Dr. Sharon Martin, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. We're gonna be together the third Wednesday of each month at 11 a.m. Pacific, for candid, honest conversations to help you change the way you think about healing, about yourself, about your life. Did you hear your answer on the show? Well, I will be with you next month, ready for all your questions from energy medicine to traditional healing and beyond. Healing is flow, movement, and destination. But are you stuck? What is your true destiny line? Listen in, call in to let the world know. Together, we'll choose what brings you into healing and let you call in all the power of the universe to act on your behalf. Reclaim your path. To learn more about me, Doc Martin, and Maximum Medicine, The Healing Hour, visit www.drsharonmartin.com. See you all next time.